الحمد لله الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه مباركا عليه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى جل جلاله وعم نواله والصلاة والسلام على سيد الحبيب المصطفى صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا إلى يوم الدين أما بعد So my dear respected friends, our dear respected brothers, our sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Nice to be in your midst today, um, in this masjid, mashallah, in the northern hemisphere. Um, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us tawfiq to speak about something that will be useful to all of us, inshallah. Because you know these 20 minutes, they're the most valuable 20 minutes of the week for the Muslims. And if the Imam who's standing here wastes your time, then it's not worth it. So I ask Allah to protect me from wasting your time. Because right? it's a big responsibility. Uh, just some time ago, uh, about two months ago, there was a brother who I met. He was a graduate of Imperial College, which is one of the top universities of the world, one of the top ten universities of the world. He had graduated several years ago, meaning maybe 15 years ago, Top, top marks. And he graduated with a number of other people in accountancy. He was only making 27,000 now. Whereas the people who graduated with him were making now 50,000, around the 50,000 pounds mark. So he wasn't making as much as them. MashaAllah, he's a religious brother. And he said that I feel that I'm not making enough. And I'm not doing enough. So I asked him a few things and mashallah, he still lives with his parents. He's not married. And I said, do you save any money? Does your income allow you to get everything you want? Yes. Do you save money? Yes. I said, you make more than a lot of imams. Right? 27,000 in England. I know uh, Norway has a different equation. Right? Uh, because water in London cost 70 pence to one pound, whereas in Norway, you, the basic water cost two pound a bottle. So it's, Norway is very expensive anyway. Right? Uh, but he makes more than a lot of imams. So now the question is, <clears throat> is that why are you feeling this way? He is feeling this way because he is comparing himself. Everything that he has, it's enough. But he's comparing himself and he's feeling bad. Now there are two words that I want to speak about quickly. One is called tawakkul and the other one is called qana'ah. Tawakkul, I'm assuming everybody knows that term. Because although it's an Arabic word, we use it in Urdu, we use it in Somali, we use it in... It's, a, it's an Islamic term and it crosses all borders. So most people know what tawakkul means. They have some idea. If I was to ask you, Ya Akhi, you know, what, uh, what do you think tawakkul is to you? Then we will probably get a few different answers here. The, the other word is qana'at. How many of you know what qana'at means? Okay, one. At least you got one. And I'm sure you you know. So, unfortunately, that's not as a popular term. It's called contentment. Satisfaction with what you have. That's a very important Islamic ideal. It's, a, it's, a, it's something that we must have. It's a part of the necessary things that a Muslim's character should be made of. Qana'at. Tawakkul and qana'a, they actually go together. It's very difficult to have tawakkul without qana'a or qana'a without tawakkul. Tawakkul means to rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that He is the source, He is the giver of everything. And we rely on Him to look after us. No believer will... Allah always wills the best for believers generally. Right? That's the case. So we, re we rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what you call tawakkul. Qana'at means to be satisfied with what Allah has given us. And not to complain. No shikaya. No, no complaints. No crying over that. Especially if you have enough. Now keep those two concepts in mind. And now I'm going to tell you a story. I have 20 minutes. I have to rush this. But I'm going to tell you a story. This story inspired me a lot. If you find it boring, then at the end, after we finish, after Jummah, please come and tell me this was boring story. 
Right, please. Right, so listen to it carefully. And if you find it boring and uninspiring, then please come and tell me and I will stop using this story then. But I find it very, very, very inspiring, alhamdulillah. This story is about a Hakim Saab. Do you know what a Hakim Saab is? I mean, the Urdu people will know what a Hakim Saab is. But you probably don't know what a Hakim Saab is. Right, that's fine. You don't need to. I'll tell you what it is. A Hakim Saab is somebody in the Indian subcontinent who deals with Yunani forms of uh, treatment, medicine. Yunani form is an old Greek uh, medicine. They use a lot of herbs and they use a lot of natural things. It's very similar to Ayurvedic medicine in India. And it's supposed to be very good. Right? So there was a Hakim Saab who was from Gujranwala. Anybody from Gujranwala here? Right? You're from half from Gujranwala. Um, so there was a Hakim Saab who used to live in a village. He was in a village outside of the small city. Gujranwala is a small city, right? Or a town or something. He used to come every day to work. So it's somebody who lives in Gardamon or in Riga or whatever it is. And he comes to uh, Oslo and he's got a clinic there. He starts off in the morning. He comes in. His wife every day, every two days gives him uh, a small piece of paper on which is the shopping list. Because you can't get everything in the villages. You have to come to the city to buy it. Every day he comes, he looks at the shopping list, uh, this much masala, this much spice, this much milk, this much this, and he puts the pricing down. And then he totals the price, 2,000 rupees, 5,000 rupees, 10,000 rupees, whatever it is. And then he starts, Bismillah, he starts his work. He says, Ya Allah, I'm only doing this for your sake. <clears throat> Imagine this, like a taxi driver. We have taxi drivers here, I'm assuming. A taxi driver who starts off in the morning or in the evening when they start work. Okay, this is what I need today. Ya Allah, I am leaving this in your hands. I am responsible for my family. That's why I need to be doing this. So, oh Allah, give me barakah. That's how he starts his day. He starts seeing the patients. You know, they check your, uh, your nabth. They check your, um, your, your, your uh, pulse. And uh, recently, there was a big hakim that came from India. He just touches your hand like this and he can tell you what your problems are. It's amazing. I went with my whole family. It's quite amazing how they just feel your pulse and they can say, okay, you've got cancer, you've got this, you've got that. It's quite amazing. And another story, that's another story. So he sees patients. As soon as he's made enough money, 3,000, 5,000 rupees, he closes his shop and he goes home. Every day he does that. Now what happened is, He's been doing this for a long time apparently. There was a person one day, he's in his shop and a person comes in who looks different. He's all suited, booted, looks like a... He's Pakistani as well, but he looks like a foreigner. And he's sitting on the side. So Hakim Saab says that after he sees everybody around him, he says, come here, I can check your pulse if you've got a problem or if it's about somebody else, then let me know. So the person came over, he says, Hakim Saab, I don't think you have... I don't think you have recognized me. He says, no, who are you? He says, I was here 15 years ago. I came here 15 years ago. Pandra saal pehle. Right? 15 years ago. So he says, no, I don't remember. He said, what happened is, we were going from Lahore to Mirpur. Right? Which is in Azad Kashmir. And we were passing through uh, Gujranwala. And my tire bust. So we were outside in the heat. And you saw us while the tire was getting fixed. So you told me to come and sit in your shop 15 years ago. So I sat there and I looked at you and your patients and you had a small girl there. And this was late morning, like, you know, nearly afternoon. And the girl kept saying to you, you finished your patients off. And then I felt that I should be supporting you, giving you something. So I said, look, let me go and ask him. Uh, to make an excuse, I'll give him, uh, I'll, I'll speak to him so I can maybe pay him some money for the good kindness he has shown me. So I came to you and I said to you that, uh, Hakim Saab, we have been in, in England for the last five, six years, right? Uh, he was from England, but originally from Mirpur. We've been in England for five, six years. Me and my wife, we can't have children. We've done all the tests in the hospital, but we can't have children. So, you know. So the Hakim Saab, while he was speaking and listening to him, he was making the wine for him, his, uh, his uh, medicine, he was making something. So when he finished, he said, okay, here, this is for you, this is for your wife. Giving children is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody can help you except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But take this, inshallah, Allah will give you barakah. And then, he, then the person said, his name was Muhammad Ali, I think. He said, how much? Because this was an excuse to pay him. He says, how much? 
He says, Aaj ka khata ban. Like today's balance is closed. So what do you mean today's balance is closed? So somebody else who was sitting there, he said, what he means is that every morning he comes, he makes the exact amount that he needs for his day. And then after that, he doesn't, he doesn't do it, take any more patience. Ajib, very strange. So he said, I went away. Now after 15 years, and he says, I remember on that time you had a daughter who kept saying, Baba, let's go home, let's go home. Right, it's late, it's late. And you kept telling her, just wait, just wait. You waited for us until our car was fixed. 15 years ago. Now I'm coming back to you. We came because now my entire family is in, London, is in the UK. Now what is new? You know, the whole Gujarat is sitting here in, in Norway, right? So he goes, what's new? Right? So uh, he said, yeah, all my family is in the UK. We're all settled there. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has now given me three beautiful children. We took your medicine. Alhamdulillah, Allah has given us three beautiful children. This time I, we came here because my, we have one sister left here who's a widow. Her husband has passed away. We had all decided that she's got one daughter and we are going to pay for her nikah. All her marriage and everything. And we've done the shopping and she was supposed to get married on the 21st or something like this. She was just a few days ago, she went to shopping. You know, out in wherever it was. They went to do shopping. She started feeling a bit uh, dizzy. But they carry a headache or something and then eventually she fell down they took her to the hospital but unfortunately when they took her to the hospital eventually she did not survive she passed away just a few days or a week or two before the wedding now we have all of the all of the summer now what happened is this i forgot to tell you one very important thing on this day when hakim saab had come in the morning and he opened up his note from his wife that morning, which he's been doing for the last 20 years or whatever long. In there, it was okay, this much, this, this much, this, small, small things. And at the bottom, Larki ke jihiz ka saman. All the expenses and all of the whatever you need for your daughter's wedding. So he had put all of the budgeting, he had put, you know, the price and under that one, it was a lot. That has to be, you know, 50,000, whatever big amount sometimes because the, the, unfortunately the... the the rewaj and the culture it demands a certain number. He wrote, Allah Ta'ala ka kaam Allah jale. Allah Ta'ala knows this is Allah's work, Allah knows. That's what he had written because he was in the morning, he said, like, I don't know how I'm going to make this much money. That's what he had written there. Then this story happened. So now this, uh, this visitor is telling him that uh, we had come for our daughter's wedding, uh, our niece's wedding. But she's passed away. We've got all the saman and me and my wife have been deciding that you also have a daughter. Because 15 years ago, you had that daughter. I remember if she is going to get married soon, then inshallah, all the we have purchased will come and drop it. Or give us your address. We'll send a truck and it will drop everything off there. If it's later, we're willing to pay for it. And the Hakim Saab is just looking at him and saying, I can't believe this. I can't believe this. And finally, he takes the paper, he says, Dekho ye. And he says, he saw on there. He said, when I first came in the morning, I didn't know how this was going to happen. And subhanallah, why did this happen? Now, this happens because every day you have been thankful to Allah. You have been satisfied with what Allah has given you. And you know that Allah is always going to give you what you need. So when it was his need, which was unusual need, you don't get daughters married every day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then provided him. I found that to be extremely inspirational. The reason is that today, the taxi drivers, and I'm not picking on taxi drivers, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them a good job and a better inshallah. But this is just an example. People with their own businesses. When you're in your own business, when you're doing taxi driving, the more you work, the more money you make. It's very difficult to have a limit that okay, I'm only going to work this much to this much. Tell me, do you know anybody who works like the Hakim Saab, that they only make the money they need and then well, they're satisfied? How many of us are even satisfied with the extra money that we make? Aren't we, I, I can talk about myself, Allah has given me the clothing I want to wear. Allah has given me the fooding, food that I want to eat. I am not forced to eat cardboard. I'm not forced to eat scraps. As our brothers in Syria are facing, the Rohingya Muslim are facing. Alhamdulillah, in the UK and in Norway, Allahu Akbar, Allah has blessed us. There's just like no doubt about it. 
Now the question is that what are we supposed to do? What should our mind be? Where is the tawakkul in our life? Where is the qana'ah in our life? The satisfaction and contentment in our life? That's the question. This is exactly what I told his brother. You, you know, the brother from Imperial College who had graduated, the accountant. I said, the reason why you're feeling bad is because you're comparing yourself. Those people who are making 50,000, do they have any time for their family? Ask them that question, maybe. Right? Maybe they've got a 50,000 pound job or a 100,000 pound whatever. But is that all it's about? Is it just about the number? Aren't you getting satisfied? There's a hadith that has really, really benefited me. When I read that hadith afterwards, it helped me so much that look, there's no point running after money, extra money. Look, if you, don't, if you can't make enough and you just can't survive, then I can understand that you are trying to get another job and so on. Right? There's people like this. There's one person who called me recently. His rent is, I think, 1,400 pounds, uh, 1,400, uh, 1,400 a month. He makes 1,100 pounds. He's got three children. He lives in a two-bedroom. That's uh, renting for two bedrooms. He gets another job to try to even just cover his rent. He makes 1,100, rent is 1,400. He has to get a second job to try to cover that. He's also thinking that... I'm going to give one of those rooms, I'm going to rent it out. So his family of five are going to then live in one bedroom. There are people who are struggling, there's no doubt about that. There are people who are struggling, may Allah make it easy for them. But those of us, mashallah, who don't have to struggle, we make more than we need for the day. The hadith of Rasulullah is a sahih hadith. The Prophet said, whoever wakes up in the morning, mu'afan fi jasadihi, he wakes up in the morning and he's got health. He's got decent health. Number two, he is secure. He's secure. You can go outside. Even in South Africa, I was there in Ramadan. My friend cannot let his daughter or wife go out just down the road to the shops. It's that dangerous. And that's a good country, like a decent country. Can you imagine in all of these other places? Right? Can you imagine in all of these other places? We have security. You can walk around, alhamdulillah, with a relative amount of safety. So we have safety, we have health. And the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever has safety, whoever has health in the morning. And number three, he has his day's sustenance. You have enough food to survive for your day. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, it is as if the whole dunya has been brought to your feet and rolled up and brought to your feet. A dunya bi hadha Now tell me, if you have that for your day, then tomorrow's another day. On that day we also have. You know from our history that every day Allah has given us. I'm not saying don't earn more and give sadaqah. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying don't feel bad by comparing yourself to others. Comparison is extremely dangerous. They have their life, you have your life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may have given you slightly less than that person, I walk past, I meet with people who have Allahu Akbar so much. If I'm going to be competing with them and looking at that as a standard, I'm going to be miserable for all my life. Because there's always somebody who has more. There's one of the princes of Saudi Arabia who has been right now, who's in trouble. Right? A friend of mine has been to his house. He says this is a mile long. That's how big that house is that he used to live in. And he, was, he says he was showing off and showing me everything. What are you going to compare yourself with? What is really life about? That's what we have to ask ourselves. Don't compare. Just be a, the, the meaning of contentment is that, Oh Allah, you have given me, alhamdulillah, I've got clothing, I've got food, I've got, alhamdulillah, the deen, and I have my daily sustenance, alhamdulillah, my health. Alhamdulillah, ya Allah, thank you very much. Alhamdulillah. That is the mode, don't compare yourself. Always look at lower people, so at least you can do shukr. You look at higher people, then you will always complain. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us contentment, to give us satisfaction, to give us barakah, to give us blessing. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you brothers uh, from Oslo, Norway, and wherever else that you come from. Jazakumullah khairan wa akhiru da'wana. And alhamdulillahi rabbil alam.